I play the shorter tees to be sociable and enjoy the day with my partners. It presents a unique challenge for the round though. I'm going to hit the ball as far as I can with the driver on every par 4 and par 5 tee even when I don't want to. I want to have the shortest possible approach shot into every hole. I always hit driver on this hole because there's never danger out to the right. That was until now because they put some bushes in the right side rough. I found one. Okay, not the best start, but we have 17 more holes to go, players. There's a church pew style bunker on the left and a lot of space on the right. I usually hit a two iron on this hole on the line that I'm hitting this driver. What a caddy! <laughs> The rainy season has just finished and the rough is a bit longer than normal. These partial shots are a lot more difficult for me from the rough. I'd rather have 120 yards in the fairway than this shot. I say that, but I should rather focus on flying the ball all the way to the pin instead of being cutesy. Then I won't complain about the lie of the ball. Lolzies. What a soft hand, man. Boy! What a man. If we take the line over the tree on the right hand side, we have a good chance of hitting nothing more than 5 iron into the green on our second shot. Oh, oh. That is a long way, the wrong way. way over other things. Yes, I'm going to be hitting driver on every hole that's not a par 3 because I want to just bash it today. I don't really care about the consequences or the score today. I just want to bash the driver as long as I can. This one's about 301, 302 yards. We'll look at GPS Garmin after this. But let's see what happens. Just bashing it without thought. Just trying to get it as close to the middle of the fairway as we can, but take what comes. My third shot is down the hill, and these greens are particularly quick on the down slope. I could chip it and let it spin to kill the pace, but I think the fringe will put the breakers on the ball just enough so it settles up to the hole for a short birdie putt. If I hit a finicky chip, I could blade it across the green or decelerate and chunk it. Best to go with the shot that we can be most assertive with.
Here's something I must add to my list of improvements. When I try draw the ball, I use strange body English. If I don't try, but trust the draw, it comes. I must remember that, because every time I try hit the draw, it never draws. The par 5 is 505 yards on the card, but that's only if we play it the way it was designed. As the flow cries, it's 460 to the middle of the green, so I'm going to cry like a flow. Players, you've got to be careful when you look at these numbers. This is 457 to the green on the, on the, as the crow flies, so the hole says different, but it's playing 457 on the line I'm taking. It may seem this drive has gone 355 yards, but the Garmin gives us the truth, and the truth will set us free. The one went a total of 298 yards. The scorecard length of the hole, minus the distance to the pin, is rarely accurate, and we often use the wrong distances. That is why I have the Garmin watch. I want the reality to improve my game by using truth, not ego. The ego is the death of the golf game. On the second shot, I focus on making decent contact, but the ball will have no spin on it because it's down in the rough. I can't hit any club hard because a wedge will make the ball jump out hot, or I'll fluff it. I take one more club and hit a kind of punch shot I learned to use while watching Genevieve to let it land short and roll up. The course was playing dry enough, and the grass on the course is pretty spongy and bouncy. It worked and rolled through the back of the green. Fairway, 
ตายตายไปไปนอชด This is an important shot because it taught me something for an upcoming hold. I flew this onto the front of the green, but the spongy, bouncy grass on this course means it released way past the hole. I watched the white fox's ball land short and bounce up onto the green despite having spin on it. Let's use that knowledge. I can't take the traditional route with my driver down the chute because it will go too far, and I'll be through the fairway. It's never a great idea to hit through palm trees, and because of that, I tried to hoist it into the air. Of course, I topped it into the water. I reload and pull off the perfect shot, but I must also remember that trying to lift the ball is futile. Swing smooth, and normal, and the distance and height will be there. On this team, I remember to try less. And look at that. Similar distance, more control. That's a significant lesson I can take from this round that I have the distance without needing to hit it so hard. On the pitch shot, I took the lesson from the 12th hole and remembered to bounce it short onto the bouncy, spongy grass. It worked nicely, and this is just how difficult it is to adapt to new courses in the topics where so many different grasses and conditions exist in the same region. Once again, there's another hole adjacent to ours. I want to avoid the water on the left, which comes into play from this tee. Can we go up to the 11th hole tee box? Yes, we can. These are some of the trickiest lies in Thailand, besides the one about the motorcycle accident and the hospital fees. The ball is up on the fluffy rough. You either pick it clean or catch it a tiny bit fat and you fluff it.
How much cost your driver? How much, Now, is this golf? Yes, it is. It's a different kind of golf. This is simple and with some better thinking, better execution on hole 5, 8, 13, 14 and 18, we could have been 4 under on the par 5s and level on the par 3s. Instead, I was 2 under on the par 5s and 1 over on the par 3s. 2 par 4s, hole 5 and 14, killed the score with 2 water balls. This was 68 that went begging. But this is a great benchmark for how it looked to hit the ball hard and far. It's a great benchmark for the short game and scoring on this course. We'll be back here from the same tees to compare in a little while. 